Hi there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Michael's Backyard Marina, the 1973 Cobalt Part 4. In this episode, we're going to do some more upkeep, a few more tweaks and tunes, so to speak. You see this piece on the ground in front of me here? This is a fiberglass piece that fits in the back. It has a couple like, I don't know, you see the old hood latches on the old Jeep that you twist, turn, and holds it down? It's got three of those inside there that hold it in place. The engine cover then comes down and rests on top of that. Uh, I'm going to address some things with the engine cover. The engine cover, you know, that wood in that engine cover is, you know, 50 years old. And they've put a minimal amount of support in there. So we're going to go ahead and take that all the way off. We'll take it to the shop. I want to cut some more strips of wood and I want to glue it in, brace it up, you know, make it just a little more solid than it is. Uh, you can sit on it and stuff, but it has a little springiness to it. I think if I put a couple of two by two stringers across or even one by two stringers, I'll just rip cut some ply or some, uh, wood and then I'm going to support it, glue it, support it, let that dry, paint it, uh, with some indoor outdoor paint. And then I'll put some, uh, sound deadening foam inside there and get that. You know, just to quiet it down a little bit more. It's not loud at all. Trust me, it's very, uh, it's one of the quietest engines I have as far as noise and engine compartment and stuff like that. But there's always room for improvement. So we're going to do that. I need to change the oil. I noticed my trim stopped working. I can hear the pump running, but I don't hear the uh, pressure building. I think it's low on fluid so that's why another reason why I pull this piece out because it allows access as you'll see in a minute access to get down around the engine so I can do some more inspection uh, we've cured the engine oil leak from the valve cover from part three that is a part two or three three two yeah one of the videos you've been following me on anyway we got a little bit of oil residue in the bilge so I want to get some uh, Dawn dishwashing soap some water and a scrub brush and just kind of scrub it up a little better. Now that I got this out of there, it's going to make it a little bit easier to get at and I can get it flushed out really clean. So I don't have any oil down there in that uh, reservoir. I can pump it out the bilge. So it cleans the bilge out as well. Uh, but uh, just going to focus on some tuning up on the back half of the boat and I'm bringing you along for the ride. I appreciate you folks watching. Don't be afraid to like, and subscribe if you've been enjoying what you've been seeing lately. Uh, I've, the, the, let's see here, I'm trying to think, you saw this thing probably now been about a week or two ago since you've seen the first episode. Uh, we've been, we've pulled apart a Larson. I got rid of the Larson boat today at the dump. It cost me $25 to dump an old boat. Uh, they charge, you know, basically $45 a ton to scrap out a boat. Now you can't have, I pulled the engine out of it and I pulled the fuel tank out of it. But other than, other than that, I, you know, I kept the wiring harness and stuff like that. But anyway, back to the Cobalt. Enough about the old Larson. Plenty of video on that. All right. One other thing I did discover, I was airing up the tires. So I started looking out. And now, I, I was, thought I recalled correctly, but maybe I didn't, that these tires were about two years old. Uh, they're not. When I was airing them up, I could see some weather checking. I'm like, yeah, two-year-old tires don't weather check, typically. So I found the date code on the other side. I didn't see them on this one because they might be the date code might be facing inward. But uh, they're seven-year-old tires. They were. This is 2022. These were made in the 39th week of 2015. So in the next year or two, I'm gonna have to upgrade and put some brand new tires on it. Now these have radial tires, and radial tires are fine for a trailer. But if you got any weight on it. The radial tires have a softer sidewall and can allow the boat to kind of drift back and forth a little more. That and your regular trailer tire are more of a bias ply setup, and there's more solid sidewall. They may not ride as smooth, but they don't give you any kind of wobble. But anyway, let's jump inside. I'm gonna take a few things apart here, get busy with that, and uh, let's get in there. Got to get this. This thing's got to get on the water some more. That's all there is to it. I almost forgot. I've been using the tarp that the Smiths had provided for me, uh, and I've been keeping it covered every night. It's covered all day, every night, unless it goes to the lake. Uh, but I, you know me and boat covers. I preach and preach and preach boat covers. Well, this, this works okay. The bad part about a tarp is it's like a greenhouse. Now, this white doesn't heat up, 
but the moisture cannot get out. It, it evaporates, hits that, and just stays in there. It just creates a humid, and you could have, like I got on these windows here, and this rubber. Rubber looks like it's in pretty good shape, but it's got a little bit of mildew on it we're gonna have to clean off. But right underneath here, brand new boat cover. I'll tell you what it is. When I get ready to fit it, um, it's one that I bought. This is not sponsored, I bought it. And since this boat is really wide and has a flat nose, I bought more of a pontoon boat style cover. And I bought it a little oversized because I really want this thing to wrap around and really protect it and keep the sun off of everything I can keep the sun off of. So, yep, that's what we're doing. I got my old Phillips screw extractor 5000 here. Let's see what we can make happen. Cannot believe that stayed. No, there we go. No, it didn't. We'll go ahead and set this off on the ground. It's got some, a little bit of heft to it. All right, put those screws safekeeping right there. We're gonna go ahead and flip this bimini the other way. I think these will flip up. They won't stay up though. That's okay. I think we'll go ahead and take these off. I think I want to do a little work here. This wood is looking a little tough here and I think I can just replace it with a piece of, piece of starboard. So we're gonna get after that right now. Now she's looking kind of naked back here. Well, that Dewalt took a D dump right onto the ground. All right, let's take a minute and look at a couple things. Wiring looks pretty decently organized. I like that. Engine mount, everything is solid. Man, that's just a long engine. But I love the horsepower, 165 horse ponies. I'm gonna get back here and uh, we're gonna get in here and check the old trim pump. See what's going on with that. All right. Looks like I need a big screwdriver and a zip tie. All right, this will be the second time. Okay, this will be the second time I've drained the oil out of this gearbox. First time we ran it about 20 miles and drained it. That black that was in there originally was black again. So I refilled it up. We've since put about Dang near 40 miles. I think it was 36 at least. So we're gonna see how this oil looks this go round. Looks pretty good so far. Looks a lot better. That's what I was hoping to see. I was hoping that first gear oil change would have flushed it out like it did. And uh, cause it was black. The AMS oil did its number. Well, that looks really, really good. No complaints about how that oil, that gear oil is looking. Looks like I just put it in there. Perfect. Well, we're gonna let that drain while I work on flushing out the inside of the boat. Okay, the old hydraulic pump hasn't been hydraulic in the last time I went out, so we're gonna pull the old plug here and see what we got going on. Now, if you don't have a zip tie, get one. Those work great for little dipsticks. Not a lot of oil in there. It's only about that full, which means it's barely on the bottom. And being as it's clear, instead of red, This sand that you can use, 20 weight motor oil. It's 
straight all 28 motor oil so that's what we're going to put in there now now if you find yourself without a funnel the right size just make you one out of paper pretty simple Needs a little bit more. Well, that's pretty full. Let's put the cap back on. And we'll clean up our mess here in a minute. Well, sure enough, made one. All right, let's get to filling them back up. I'll tell you what really stinks though, is we have brand, two brand new plugs and then you decide to go and mess with the trim and you set your plugs on the trim, on the, on the cavitation plate and you trim it up and then your, your plugs drop into the, one drops into the oil, which is fantastic, I could find it, but the other one dropped into the tall grass and I'll be dipped if I can find it. So we're pumping her full of some uh, Amsoil Synthetic Marine Gear Lube 75W90. The nice thing after what I just saw draining this, uh, I can run this the rest of the summer and fall here and not have to be worried about the gearbox oil anymore. We'll change it again next spring or this fall before I winterize it. Feel relatively confident what's going on in that gearbox. All right, we've got the oil drained. We've got the new Wix oil filter installed, but I'm gonna pick up some special oil for this boat and I'm probably gonna start using it in most of my older boats and I'll share with that. I'll share with you what that is. Uh, Probably tomorrow when I'm putting it back in. Right now I'm running out of daylight. I got clouds coming in, chance of rain. It's a good time to unbox the old boat cover. Now this thing looks like it was vacuum sealed. I'm always looking for the tag that says front. So I know where to start. Yeah! That didn't work. Now, as I'm demonstrating here, my normal practice is to use some pool noodles to protect the corners of the carver. I will be buying some bigger, heavier duty pool noodles, but this is what I had, let's just call it in stock. Well, there it is. It's not perfect, but there's plenty of room for me to put. I'm gonna put a couple stand-up things in the front here, two in the back. Right now, I've got a mop handle with a mop on pointing up, but I'm gonna put me some kind of uh, something in the middle back here to help support the cover so the cover drapes down nicely and uh, doesn't have pockets for water to settle in and cause me a bunch of problems. Because the last thing you want to do is bail out your boat when you're trying to do everything to prevent water getting in your boat anyway. Well, this will be good enough for tonight. If we get a little bit of rain, I might have a little bit of trouble, but 
The good news about this type of fabric that's on here is it's supposed to be breathable. It's supposed to keep the sun rays. It's supposed to be UV protectant, water, uh, water repellent, but it also lets air go up through it so that moisture can escape. It's, uh, it's like the, it doesn't have vent sewn into it, but it has, it's a vented material. I'll leave a link in the description below on this particular cover of what it was. And you can see how this one fits on this boat. Now this boat has like a 74, let's see, it's almost 80 inches wide to the outside edge of the boat. And it's 18 feet long. And this is how this one fits. Now I, this seems a little like a lot extra, but that's what I wanted because once I put the poles up to support the top, I want to be able to go down to the frame and tie these off so it's, you know, sits somewhat tight. Uh, will this one hold up to snow? I'm not quite so sure it can endure, endure snow like the other Empire Cover brand will, but uh, that's the, that doesn't matter to me because this is gonna be under a shelter and this is to keep it clean while it's under the shelter or like sitting out like it is now to keep the dew from gathering on it. We'll be back tomorrow when there's more, more light left in the day and we'll get the oil put in it and we're gonna work on the engine cover and the seats. There's some wood issues there I wanna address. I wanna get fixed. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna fix it and then we'll reinstall them back on the boat and that part of it will be done. And uh, you know what I'm gonna do tonight? I'm gonna go ahead and kick the out drive up and I'm gonna see how well the hydraulics hold overnight all right we've currently running all the way up we'll check on it in the morning let's see what we got going on in the morning all right folks we brought the engine cover inside to take a closer look at it and see what i could do to strengthen it up because you know this is pretty floppy on both sides um this was the piece of wood and it's suffering from a little bit of dry rot, rot dry rot dry rot down in here that went across so there's only one piece across here and one piece back here and a couple of little kicker pieces back in this area. There's plenty of room under this engine cover to put some more support. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, we're going to replace this chunks of wood. Uh, there was staples that were used from the outside. Uh, I don't see any. I don't see any evidence of glue being used anywhere. Uh, the staples, the we used to hold the, to the plywood and the staples used to hold the fabric in place or the vinyl in place was not stainless steel, so it's rusty. Uh, I think we're gonna do it up really right. I'm gonna rip cut some new, some two by that I've got laying around to make it this size. I think these are just two by twos, be my guess. Uh, about an inch and three eighths, by inch and a half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut me some new pieces of wood, replace this one here. I'm taking the fabric or the vinyl off so I can actually put wood screws in here. I bought wood screws for it. I'm going to screw it back together and I'm going to glue it. It's going to be screwed and glued. And that way it'll be stronger. And these sides here have a little bit of a bow to them, which when it sits on that fiberglass piece is not really a big issue. And this doesn't have a lot of rot going on. It's actually pretty okay. But I can actually put another strip of, no reason why I can't put a one by here and here. I don't see what it would hurt to have the extra support in place. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. I think it's going to be a better fix overall. It's going to be sturdier. And so when I lift up the hood, it's going to actually, or the, the engine cover, that it won't try to sit there and tweak and twist and just, you know, it's just basically wearing itself out whenever you lift it up. It does have a lifting strap in the middle and you want to lift it up, but there's actually nothing to hold it up. And who knows? I may decide to put some gas struts or something on here eventually and I want to have something good to hook it to so that this thing can come up and it will just stay up for you, like your hood of your vehicle. Or, uh, you know, having to use a rod, a rod prop, or in this case, I'm using a boat paddle it's okay. It works. The whole idea is you're not in the engine compartment that much, right? But uh, I like to I like to keep an eye on things under the engine. I like to check check the oil on a regular basis. You're looking for any new leaks or anything to develop, and uh, 
we'll go from there. So right before I brought this in, you saw me changing the oil, draining some oil, doing some oil, going to do some oil things. Now I got a question for you guys. I've been doing a little bit of thinking and I want to run this by you. What I want to run by you is what's your thoughts? What's your feelings? And I want your feedback. Uh, by the time you see this, I will already have installed one of these back in the engine. But there again, it's easy enough to trade to change the oil. But I watch some of these uh, guys on YouTube, Vice Grip Garage. Is you know Derek on there has a, a vast knowledge of old engine experience. Uh, he likes the old stuff from the 60s and 70s, brings it back to life, brings it back around. You see I'm putting a lot of, these guys that are doing these shows, there's a couple others I watch as well. They like to use Rotella. It's a diesel oil, heavy duty diesel engine oil. Now, the advantage this diesel oil has, and I watched just watched a video last night where Project Farm was comparing a couple of diesel uh, oils against each other and it was interesting because he sends these oils in for a report to get an oil analysis done on it which is pretty cool and the one thing I noticed with the Rotella this is the T1 not the T6 this is a straight grade SEAE 30 I went to O'Reilly's I went to Advance Auto and below and below, and I'm like, said hey Advance Auto didn't even carry Rotella uh, O'Reilly's does carry Rotella. They didn't carry it in a straight grade. I asked the guys, I said, I'm looking for a straight grade Rotella. And he's like, oh, we don't have that here. Not even sure they make it, he says. And so this is going to probably frustrate the living crap out of a few of you. But I went to Walmart and I thought, I'm just going to look. And lo and behold, they had the Shell Rotella T1 SAE straight weight 30. And I thought, awesome. And the other thing I got to do a little more research on, but Rotella in these old, this Rotella diesel oil has a lot of zinc in it. And zinc is what you need on these old engines with the lifters and the tappets and the cams and the whole nine yards, right? Well, you can run just a regular newer oil and then you can put this uh, like racing ZD, ZDDP, TB, Zinc Plus. It's an engine break-in oil additive. Designed for hot rods, classic cars, and race engines. Well, I don't remember what this costs, but you know, it's more than a dollar. This engine oil is already rather expensive, and then you add more to it. I got four quarts of this for under $18. So, my thoughts to you guys is what would you run it? Now, keep in mind, this is. The boats I'm playing around with, these old Iron Dukes, you know, we're talking anywhere from 35 to 50 year old engines I'm playing around with, even, even older. I've got some 67 and 68s that have this engine in it. And uh, I just wanted to run that by you while we're gonna, we're gonna jump into a, let's call it a time lapse mode on some of this stuff, uh, getting this cover rebuilt. Now what I'm going to do on this cover, let's back up to the oil. Anyway, give me your comments on the oil down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. I know there's some of you out here out there that are oil experts. Matter of fact, I got a guy at my local Napa. I know I mentioned Napa a lot. They need to like bring the appreciation into my wallet. But what he knows, he's he I call him the oil guru at my local Napa and he, his hobby, one of his hobbies is oil, oils and lubricants and understanding them and, and digs into them as to what they all are. He's got vehicles with over 300,000 miles that still use zero oil between oil changes. Um, some of it's due to the engine, the design and the manufacturer. Some of it's due to how he takes care of his stuff. So I'm going to, touch base with him and see what he says about these different things and the, the zinc additives and stuff like that. Cause you know, everybody today is, you know, used to dealing with everything. Think about it. 
from 2000 forward. I mean, you got a 2000 car, it's 22 years old, but it has modern technology and modern oils and it doesn't need all the old zinc additives and a ZDDP and any other kind of acronyms and initials for oil. But anyway, that's my rant on oil. I am most likely gonna put this in. And by the end of this video, you'll know what my decision was. But if I don't like it, it only takes a little bit to drain it out, put different stuff in. All right, we're gonna time lapse you through this because I'm gonna time lapse you and show you and tell you what you're gonna see in the time lapse. And let's see if I get it right. So what you're gonna see here is you're gonna see me remove the rest of these staples carefully out of this, uh, out of the original stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'm probably gonna remove the original wood cross pieces out of here and replace them with what I wanna have in here. Uh, screwed and glued. Then I'm gonna paint the whole thing with some indoor outdoor, good quality indoor outdoor paint. Let it dry. Reattach the vinyl and the foam back in place. And then I'm gonna put the sound deadening material inside and then we'll reinstall this back on the boat and call this. I would say, you know, once I'm done with it, it's good for another decade plus. What I'm gonna do on the inside here will probably, could possibly outlast the vinyl. I don't know, this vinyl has stood the test of time. There's no doubt in my mind about that, but let's see if we can stretch that time out just a little bit more. The other thing I'm gonna do is the way this vinyl wraps around, it wraps around just to the inside of this wood here. So probably what I'm gonna do is keep my structural support inside the vinyl area, just so I can wrap it around still and staple it like it's currently stapled and not have the staples exposed to the front edge of my wood. Um, just so the staples aren't rubbing on other pieces that it, this comes in contact with. This vinyl protects the gel coat and if I, now if I have staples down against there rubbing, that wouldn't be great, would it? That's how I'm going to attack this. So let's dip into the time lapse. See you on the other side when I'm showing off how awesome it looks.
Well, folks, I made a decision. We're going back into this engine with Rotella. Now, if I can see if I can not spill any. This is just some straight 30 weight. Rotella T1. I'm not sure how much it holds. We're going to put four quarts in it and we'll check it. Go from there. It says full, but I'm tilted up hill slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and fire it up. Get that oil filter, that brand new Wix oil filter, full. And uh, we'll go from there. Right, I gotta get my water back on the outdrive before I fire up. Let's see if she'll fire. Oh yeah. shut her off let the oil settle down we'll check it and add oil to top it off alrighty let's see how much oil she got in her looks like it could use a little bit now that she's full now that the fuel the oil filters full you dump a little more in and we'll be ready well it's full we're good to go everything looks nice and dry up here no no gasket leaking on the valve cover anymore that's awesome all oh, looks pretty good Believe it or not, this used to be red. If you go down and look underneath, this was originally red in here. But uh, as you can see, I mean, I'm not a light guy. That is rock solid. Before, if I'd have done that, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I would have caved it in. That will not happen now. This thing is so solid, you can crawl around on it. Do whatever you want on it. She is rock solid. Now, I've got to get my hinges back in place. So let's kind of get this lifted over. Now, pretty easy to put the hinges back on where they are there. So what I'm going to do is put two screws back in. One in each hinge. And then I'm going to be able to mark it. Because I do have it, I do have the markings on the vinyl itself, but you know it may not be just exactly where it was. I want to get it as close as I can. So what I'm going to do is use the old screws. Now that's exactly where that was. I want to say that looks pretty good right there. We're going to go ahead and take my little ballpoint pen here and just kind of. Mark it so I can leave this in the right spot and screw it right down. I'm really glad I didn't go with the old holes because they didn't line up very good with what I just laid out. Uh, 
There we go. Solidly in place. Sweet. Now I need to work on the back cushions. I think we're gonna have to do that next. Okay, now it's story time with the boat doctor. You know, earlier in the video, I talked about using either Shell Rotella T1 straight 30 weight or Napa oil and using a zinc additive. Don't get me wrong, both will give you great results. Especially these older flat tappet engines. You know, uh, I found the thing, you know, you search the internet long enough, you can find anything that supports your story. This one popped up really quick in a form. So, this is a guy, I don't, I'm not going to disclose any names, but I will tell you that the person that responded said, works for Scheller Globe Solutions, West Hollow Technology Center in Houston, Texas. So, I think this guy, uh, he's a staff engineer. I think he would have a lot to say about his product. Now, the question on this forum that I found was, we still hear faithful news about fateful news about zinc leaving our favorite oils. Because zinc is the additive you need for these flat tappets and the lubricity for these engines that were, you know, you know, 50, 60 year old engines, right? I wrote Shell, I wrote to Shell about their Rotella brand. Here is my letter and their answer. So nobody's gonna take time to make this stuff up. This is, this is real. I, I give it a 99.9% .9 real factor. I've been using Rotella 30. That's a straight 30 weight like this here actually. Uh, for years in my antique Buicks and understand the latest version of Rotella has dramatic, uh, dramatically reduced the amount of zinc. So that zinc's that important piece for these old engines. The overhead valve engine with non-roller valve mechanisms theoretically needs the zinc for the sliding friction. Sliding friction, that's the important thing there because rollers don't need the zinc, sliders do. In your cams with your flat tablets and your hydraulic lifters, I need zinc. Uh, what happened to Rotella? Question mark. Can I continue to use it in my antique engines or should I find another oil made just for the antiques with zinc added? Now, you can buy zinc additive. That's easy. It's out there. Z Response is the name. I'm not going to use any names here. Mr. Mr. So-and-so, comma. There has been no reduction of zinc in the straight weight, weight Rotella, Rotella, straight weight Rotella oils such as Rotella T30. There has been a slight reduction in zinc for the multi-grade Rotella T oils, which is like your 5W30s, 15W40s, stuff like that. In order to meet the new API CJ-4 specification, Rotella, Rotella T30 should still work well in your antique Buicks. Thank you for your interest in Shell products. Final word, Rotella. Now, since I've been watching a lot of these other folks out there that work on the older cars, the 60s and 70s muscle cars, and they're bringing them back to life out in the middle of a cornfield like Derek uh, at Vice Grip Garage on his channel. He's got, you know, 1.2 million subscribers. Uh, popular name on YouTube if you're into car, in the car world. Uh, I just stumbled onto a few other videos that they were using the same thing, using Shell. O'Reilly's carry Shell. The, my O'Reilly's around here didn't carry shell in the in the single with straight it's the straight weight like the 30 weight but guess who did Walmart yep Walmart did so I bought two this is a one gallon four quarts eighteen dollars yep eighteen four times six is eighteen all the other oils I was been using in this cost more than that. And this already has the additive, so I don't have to buy anything else to go with it. So the decision here at 
the backyard marina is every boat I own, because they're old, are going to be, next oil change is going to Rotella. And I know a few of you have left comments about my Wix, not my Wix, my Fram oil filters on a couple of these engines. Well, guess what? They're all going to Napa Gold, or have been converted to Napa Gold and or Wix oil filters. And some of you might be watching a video from three, four years ago. You'll catch a Fram on an engine possibly. Well, that's just the way it went. But that's not the way it goes today. All right, I just wanted to share, that's what's in this bad boy now. We're gonna monitor it, keep a close eye on it, and just kind of see how fast, it, how many hours, because this one has an hour meter, which I, I like. Uh, I might be adding hour meters to other boats, just to just to kind of get a, a feel for how many hours you're putting on an, on an engine and how, many, how much oil, how fast the oil starts to darken after X amount of hours. So just wanted to share that with you. Now, one more tech tip and trick. You might have seen it in another video of mine, but it bears repeating because it is so, so cool. It involves a guy named, named Dave Kimbler, longtime watcher of the channel and longtime commenter on the channel, and he had a, a tech tip on something you can do with these outdrives something as simple as a small piece of PVC pipe. Watch and check out this tech tip. I'm gonna show you another slick trick right here, right now. If you've hung out this far, you're gonna see this slick trick and I'm gonna repeat this slick trick. Now this is the outdrive on the back of the cobalt here. And as most of these old outdrives, they'll sag. And you'll, 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 uh, Man, the lawnmower sprayed grass all over this. You'll, uh, these things, the hydraulics will not hold because they're old. And I'm gonna get to the bottom of that. I'm gonna figure out how that works. And I'm gonna figure out how to teach you guys how to cure that problem. Uh, not permanently, but at least for a good long time, hopefully. But what you see right here looks like a gray hydraulic cylinder is not. There's a person that left a comment. He gave me permission to use his name. Now this gentleman's name is Dave Kimbler. He's been a long time subscriber, long time commenter, and you know, share some tech tips with me here and there. And I, this one just, I, I read the comment that morning and I'm like, I gotta go do this right now before I leave the house. This is a piece of PVC pipe and it is cut just over center, so it will actually snap onto this ram. Whoops. So the cool part is you're, you're leaving the lake or you're going to the lake, raise your, raise your out drive up, snap that on. You don't have to lower it down. If it's leaking, it'll lower it down. The nice thing is this can sit here and float, just like that's doing right there. It's not going to blow off because you just snapped it on. You can hear that snap. And you see how easy it is to remove. The cool part is when it relaxes and it starts to leak like it normally does, it'll just come down and rest against your PVC. And once it's resting against the PVC, guess what? It won't go any further. And that way you don't have to have that awkward, and let's call it embarrassing, situation where you've got a strap going from here to here or from your pull, you know, your, your tow lugs or whatever to, to this area to keep the, uh, the stern drive up. This way, this looks almost all natural, so to speak, except for when it says, you know, three quarter inch PVC pipe. So find yourself a piece of PVC pipe. I took it down my bandsaw and I just kind of ripped it down the bandsaw over center, just past center. That way you got that snapping action. I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Now, when this is at home and not in use, I take those off and let this relax so your, your boot and everything here has a chance to relax a little bit. It doesn't say stay fully stretched out for long periods of time. Anyway, tech tip from Dave Kimbler. 
appreciate your viewership. Appreciate your, your comments and keep it coming, bud. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed this episode of Michael's Backyard Marina. I appreciate your attendance and your viewership and your liking and subscribing on the videos. Just really helping the channel out a lot. Uh, I might have mentioned this in a previous video, but I'm trying to up my how often I drop content on the channel. It takes a decent amount of work to do this. Uh, I spend a lot of my waking hours when I'm not working my regular nine to five doing this so I can keep this channel going and growing. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that uh, it's appreciated. Now, we just cracked 16,000 subscribers not that long ago. Looking forward to getting to 20. And let's just see how far this goes. I want to continue. I, you know, my passion for boats, since I put my first, first video out on, on my 1976 StarCraft over four years ago, uh, has not weakened much. My... My going fishing has been has taken a severe hit, uh, but you know I've come to the resolve that you know whether I'm out there on the lake fishing or tinkering with a classic old boat, I enjoy it equally well. Uh, I don't find either one of them frustrating, irritating. I find them uh, well. Fishing I think is a little cheaper than working on boats, but pick your poison. I enjoy getting these old things brought back to life. I enjoy bringing you guys content. And uh, as long as I can walk and breathe, my goal is to drop you a video uh, at this point in time, at least for the forthcoming year. And then uh, we'll go beyond that, obviously. But uh, I'm looking at dropping videos on Wednesday morning, Friday morning, and Sunday morning. My goal is to drop three videos a week. Now, with that being said, you're going to see some videos that are repairing my lawnmower. You're going to see videos of me working on my car when something goes bad. Or, another, or my wife's car, or my tow vehicles for the boats. Or repairing a trailer, or just doing some, I got some trailer work I need to do on here. I got some, you know, it may not all be boat related, but I'll, I can't make you the promise, but I'm trying to keep it 90% or higher boat content and outboard content and stuff like that so all right well i think that's my spiel for this time I, that engine cover oh man what can you say more about that that turned out fantastic so we'll keep bringing this boat back around like i said before in another video i think you know this boat's in really great shape i would call it a survivor and the fact that the vinyl's in the shape it is in speaks volumes to how it was taken care of. You look inside of another boat and you see mold and mildew and rot. I mean rot, not dry rot. Dry rot's different than wet rot. Dry rot means this wood just got old. I mean, it's 50 year old wood. It just, you know, ever since the tree was cut down, it didn't have the support it needed to keep it fresh. And uh, I think this had some stain on it or something at one time to kind of get rid of the wood color and maybe protect it for a little while, but come on, 50 years. Even your house might need a coat of paint after a, you know, a few years out in the, you know, just out in the world in general. But, all right, we, uh, we're we gonna wrap this up. Enjoy some more drone footage. Hopefully that's, uh, next time I take this out, I'll report out, the next time I do a video on the cobalt after this one, it'll most likely be after it's been in the water again. And I'll report out on how adding the oil to the trim pump helped uh, I think it helps a great deal to have it because uh, um, a hydraulic pump doesn't pump much without fluid. So, all right. This is Michael saying if it ain't broke, fix it till it is and keep the wet side down. Mm -hmm.